After the Friday vlog production, there was some additional breaking news about the banning of Alex Jones, Laura Lomer, Paul Joseph Watson, uh, Milo Yiannopoulos, and Farrakhan. Now, of course, Alex has already been banned from Facebook. Milo had already been banned from Twitter. These were just all culminated together to kind of create a narrative that the mainstream media wanted to sell. So during the week or in the last couple of days, I've been trying to address some of these topics with local media and uh, some of the mainstream media and, and engaging with people who may not entirely be familiar with what all is going on when they talk about uh, the bannings and uh, you know the denial of free speech and the ability to speak on a private platform and these type of legal uh, wranglings that go on. So instead of going into all of that particular wrangling, I'm going to give you kind of an overview of what has been happening at least in the last two years within social media so you guys can get an idea of what we're talking about so it doesn't hinge just on some of the things the mainstream media and legacy media want to touch on which is um, these far-right extremist types which is the way they just kind of lump all these individuals together to try to say look at what uh, you know these uh, virtue signaling tech giants are doing look how we're cleaning up our environment look how we're cleaning up our social media by eliminating these uh, these advocates for violence and these advocates for inciting violence and nonsense it's just it's 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 all very inflammatory language sensationalizing and exaggerations to kind of of course sell their um sell their media products sell their videos sell their links you know part of the outrage mob and call out culture and we're going to talk about this now and uh, i'll go over some of the things section by section all of these sites and information will be down in the public section below all right, guys, so we're going to be moving through this material rather quickly, and then I'll add some particular thoughts and opinions and things maybe towards the end. So as we can see here from The Atlantic, Instagram and Facebook ban far-right extremists. So this is the type of inflammatory language that is used to kind of encompass all these individuals into one lump group. And in simplest terms, and in a rather sweeping generalization of my own, this is what the Trump detractors and others, activists and other uh, craptivists, outrage mobs, virtue signalers, and uh, social justice warriors like to hang their banner on, is that these individuals are far-right individuals. And they aren't. The only person not included in this image, by the way, is Paul Joseph Watson. Now, what I'm hearing from people is several things, and I hear this all the time as a content creator. Well, you don't have to rely on Facebook, you don't have to rely on Instagram for money. This is true. But what we do rely on as creators is that we are to be protected under the terms of service, which means that if you're going to enforce the terms of service, then it should apply to everyone and not just certain groups of individual. Let's take Alex Jones here for a moment. Alex Jones was not only deplatformed, and most people were you know, quite happy. Oliver Darcy from CNN tried to take credit that he himself was part of the people who were able to take down Alex Jones. But here's the reality. It wasn't just that Alex Jones was deplatformed and removed from these platforms. These individuals went after his payment processors. They went after his business. They went after his company. They went after his um, registrars for his websites. They went after his hosting services. They went af after every single thing because it isn't about removing and censoring people. It is about eradicating individuals that certain groups do not agree with. Now we're going to move to this image right here because we're going to be talking about these radical groups of individuals, these vocal uh, minorities, and they are a very small group. But this is the perception of them. When they're online, they seem very pervasive and they seem to be almost everywhere. Uh, and of course, I will leave links to all this down in the public section below. See, the Democratic uh, electorate on Twitter is not the actual demographic electric. It's not. Because here's the individuals as they're online, and this is the way they appear. See, impeach Trump and just basically, you know, the general uh, virtue signaling and things that they do. And here's what they really look like off social media in the, in the regular everyday society. So in everyday society, these people can be pretty much ignored. And I don't mean that to be derisive and I don't mean that to be, um, you know, in insulting or anything like that. I'm simply saying that this is why these individuals have to come on the Internet because everyday folks just don't want to hear it. And it could be argued the same thing for all the normies that are on Facebook. Now, I want to use this graph the from uh, Americans Hidden Tribes. This is from, um, uh, well, this is titled Hidden Tribes Within America. I'm not sure who the publisher is at the, at the moment. Let's see if we can take a quick look. Um, 
Anyway, I, I just let's just go ahead and get into the topic here. I'm going to leave all these down there below if you guys want to research them further. So as you can see here, the hidden tribes of America. So here we have the left wing, which is 8% progressive activist. Then we have 11% of the traditional liberals. And then we have 15% of the passive liberals. Then we have kind of really kind of more of the majority of political uh, uh, disengaged. These are individuals who <laughs> won't watch this video uh, and probably just go on their social media to do their thing and you know and, and that's about it then we have moderates then we have traditional conservatives and then we have um devoted conservatives this would be the right wing or the trump the you know the kind of the, the trump deplorables if you will but as you can see just in this basic graph and you can do a regular google search also to see like the general consensus of american mindset is not always left leaning i say that of course as a conservative myself i am what would be considered a traditional conservative but um, at least I am open and receptive to listen to all people. And I do have liberal friends. I have friends from all different groups, all different parties, so that I can educate myself and they can educate me on their ideologies and philosophies, worldviews, morals, and ethics. Although I may not agree with them, at least I can have a discussion with them. So here you can see kind of where they fall. Now we're going to move over here to um, Andrew Torba. So why am I moving over to Andrew Torba? Because one of the other arguments from the sensationalist and sarcastic, cynical people was, oh, well, if you don't like the regular um, social media, why don't you make your own? Well, that's exactly what Andrew Torba did. Andrew Torba is a former Silicon Valley innovator. He was one of the elite individuals out of Silicon Valley who decided, or who was one of the few, I guess, closet conservatives. He came out, he made his website called Gab, and of course, his uh, Silicon Valley uh, colleagues waited in ambush until they could come along and go after him. Now, this is a story about the Pennsylvania individual that had posted on his site, but this same individual also posted on Facebook. Now, I am excluding certain terms and certain languages in here to avoid monetization, which I'll explain here in a moment. So Andrew came up with his own site called Gab, and basically what happened was prior to this individual in Pennsylvania, there was another white right wing extremist that posted some material on there. Gab's um, moderators in terms of service uh, security team was working on it and they were going to remove it. And Google's like, aha, see, now we uh, now we see that um, you can't be trusted to create your own site. So obviously we're going to take you off of our platform. So basically what they did was they started off by removing his app from the Google store and from Apple. Not only did they remove him from those platforms, they also went after his registrars. They went after his server hosting sites. They went after his payment processors. So it wasn't, again, it wasn't about censoring and protecting the public. It was about eradicating and eviscerating any competitors to, say, the mainstream media or to Google. I know that's very inflammatory. I know that's very general, but I'm, again, I'm moving through tons and tons of information here. The other thing that um, Andrew did and his design team was they came out with a program app called Dissenter. And what Dissenter was is that it allowed individuals to post and comment information on news articles. Now, uh, you might recall that CNN and many of the other um, platforms used to have comment sections down below many of their uh, articles. Well, of course, um, being in the internet age, a lot of trolls and activists and other individuals went in and started going after the um, the uh, journalist and the and the um, the publishers and things like that. And so, a lot of them just excluded or removed. Uh, comment sections altogether. So Andrew came out with Dissenter to kind of, you know, he's an innovator, he's intelligent, he knows how to, uh, you know, antagonize those who antagonize him. So he came out with Dissenter, and now it's been removed from both Firefox and Chrome. So again, as I mentioned, it isn't about censoring, it isn't about trying to protect society, it's all about eviscerating the competition, eviscerating those who you disagree with. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, Section 230. What is Section 230? Section 230 protects platforms from being prosecuted for content that's posted on their sites, which was not allotted to Gab. So when this happened in Pennsylvania, of course, Gab got another hit from all the different uh, media sources, all the different tech giants. And so he ended up having to get a new registrar. He had to end up getting a new web hosting site. He had to end up getting new payment processors. So Section 230 basically protects Facebook, Instagram, you know, the, the tech giants, as it were, from being prosecuted based upon um, individuals posting on their site. 
you can go to the link and read all of the particular details. Now, so what does all this kind of emergent information mean? What is emergent AI? What are, what are the AI um, algorithms and things doing uh, on sites? What does this talk about AI and blocking and censoring and, and whatever else? So as you can see here, these are sites that have been hit by the AI from YouTube for particular terms, particular topics, or particular subject matter, and even the images that are here. Obviously, something like Las Vegas uh, Mandalay Bay shooting, as you recall, there in Las Vegas. And basically what it is is YouTube allows for the mainstream media to post this type of information because, well, they're the mainstream media, right? They have the pedigree. They have the credentials. You know, they have the, you know, all of the accolades that they would need to be, obviously, a professional media site. And who am I? I'm just a small-time uh, little YouTube creator so no you're not able to talk about these particular topics because you are not a you do not have the pedigree so anyway and i say that kind of you know sarcastically tongue-in-cheek kind of thing but anyway i wasn't overly concerned so these are not suitable for most advertisers so basically what the ai is looking for are keywords key features video uh closed caption all the different things that are within our video and so these are all demonetized so i cannot earn any income or get very basic limited income from any of these particular videos. Now, I wanna show you a graph, a very detailed graph of how YouTube works within its recommended and suggested, um, well, I'll just say in it, within its programming, right? So here we have right groups within social media, the centrist uh, within it, and then we have the, what would be the left or the far left. And as you can see, the intersection of these recommended and suggested here. So you see like from the left here, they, they do a lot of suggestions to the centrist, very few to the, the right. And then we see the right have very few to the centrist and very few to the left. Now, as we click through these, you can see like what these particular shows are, or program channels are like. The Late Show with Stephen Colbert obviously is a mainstream media site. And so is Jimmy Kimball. And so is Late Night with Seth Meyers as well as The Daily Show with Trevor Noah. And as you can see, these are all considered left and how much influence they have here. Now, as we start moving a little bit to the left, now we have Fox News, which is considered right. And you can see like that little splatter effect there about all the different reach or recommended and suggestions that they get. Now we're gonna move over here real quickly to Joe Rogan, who is really, really more of a centrist, but he considers himself a kind of a classic liberal. And then we have um, his other channel. And then over here we have, uh, Joe Rogan University fan channel. So all of these groups here make up the Joe Rogan show. And as you can see, uh, where they reach out to and so forth. But he is kind of a classic liberal. And there's the Daily Wire. And here we have Steven Crowder, who is a conservative and Christian, very vocal about both. And uh, you can see his reach here. And I follow a lot of Steven Crowder. Here's Paul, jo Paul Joseph Watson, one of the individuals who was recently banned from um, the internet. He is from the UK, he is British. And uh, there isn't anything extreme about him. There isn't anything extreme about Crowder other than Crowder's, um, you know, <laughs> his shows and, and just his, uh, you know, routines and things that he does. Then over here we have uh, No BS. I can't even say that uh, online because uh, the, the video will get flagged. Here's Black Pigeon. Now I was trying to find, um, like, where... Um, here's Sargon of Akkad. You may have heard about him, too. That's Carl Benjamin. And then, of course, he's running for UKIP over there in, in the UK. I was trying to find um, where Tim Poole was. Is that Tim? Here's Tim. And here's Tim. And Tim considers himself a liberal. Now, Tim is an actual professional journalist. This is his website right here. I would highly, 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 highly times 10 recommend that you go to his site if you want to learn all about the particular nuances and activities that go on within social media. All right, so where were we? All right, so obviously, well, there's my channel. Anyway, we'll move on from there. Now, we were discussing about individuals being, uh, re or, or the, um, the, the activist groups going after payment processors. Well, they also go after other um, money uh, services also, like Patreon and Subscribestar. So, as I mentioned, they aren't satisfied with individuals simply being removed from a platform. No, they want they want these people eviscerated. So here you see Patreon purges bankers, or Patreon purge bankers are the global speech police. 
So now you can see certain individuals who were banned from Patreon, like Sargon of Akkad, who I just showed you, Carl Benjamin, as well as I think Stix Hammer and of course Tim Pool were all affected because once these people are removed from these sites, individuals who supported individuals like Sargon of Akkad, of course, also support people like Tim Pool and, um, and uh, Stix Hammer. But again, here we go. So really, uh, you see it goes be even beyond that. See, Visa and MasterCard report reportedly refused service to David Horowitz, newest victim of the SPLC anti-conservative purge. Purge might be the appropriate term because I said eviscerate, <laughs> but basically purge, I guess, is uh, kind of the more um, appropriate term for it. But here we can see that it's already not only removing these people here, but also their banking services. And here's Chase Bank. Now, the Proud Boys, as you guys may have heard about, that was led by and created by Gavin McGinnis, it was done as a joke. It was a group of friends horsing around saying, hey, what if we came up with this really snarky uh, group and then what we did was we supported Trump and we did these kind of little activist kinds of things and we just horsed around. And here we can see Chase Bank shuts down Proud Boys leader's personal bank account. And as you can see, this is not a typical white right-wing extremist individual. And so this is uh, Enrique uh, Dorio, who was uh, shut down uh, or was denied banking. Who else was denied banking? Well, if we look over here, it's Laura Lomer, who was um, banned from Facebook and Twitter, as we just read about. Her access, access suspended. Chase Bank suspends Laura Lomer's access to online banking. What is Laura Lomer? She is a boots on the ground reporter. She is a Jewish woman who is oftentimes also accused of not only being a Nazi as a Jewish person, but as a right winger being a Jewish person. So, I mean, you guys can try to reconcile how a Jewish person can be a Nazi, but nonetheless, she was denied this access to Chase Bank. She is not the only one. There are several other individuals out there right now that are trying to determine what's going on. Now, I don't want to say in fairness, because that actually would suggest that I have some sort of, uh, <laughs> of a defense of these institutions. But from what I understand, some of these institutions, the main institutions, you know, the corporate types, the suits and all them, weren't entirely aware that this was happening and this is trying to be, or this is being addressed because this is illegal. All right. So now going back to Section 230 and Twitter and the terms of service and why I get irritated and annoyed when people say, oh, well, if you don't like to be on there, you don't have to be on there. Well, yeah, that's true. But look, Jack Dorsey, the very thing that he bans people for, he does himself. Twitter CEO trolled for smash patri patri or, or baramical patriarchy placard. Okay, I can't even show you that. All right. So basically, he's in India. His uh, security director is uh, Vijaya. There's a very excellent Joe Rogan show podcast with him, Vijaya, or Joe. It's Jack, Vijaya, Tim Pool, and Joe Rogan. I suggest you check that out. Yes, that is grammatical. I meant to mispronounce it. So, so here we have Jack Dorsey violating his own rules. And um, if you go to the site now, ironically enough, it is Al Jazeera. But I'm going to leave a link down there, and I want you guys to scroll down and see the actual image. You would be banned from Twitter if you posted the same image that Jack did. So again, here's Tim Pool, and I would encourage you guys to check this out because this is the stuff that we deal with every single day as content creators. There are going to be those individuals who don't agree with our content, and that's totally understandable. We get it. But the idea of going on, say, like Reddit, like over here, uh, this is Reddit. Reddit is kind of the forums of the internet, and this is kind of where the major discussions go on. So this is kind of the old school uh, form of... Uh, communication of how we did it originally back you know like in the in the late 90s and early 2000s where everybody just went to boards and bbs boards and things like that and this is where we all discussed ideas activities and so forth but no one tried to go out and ban people no one were doxing people no one were, were trying to shut down payment processors they weren't trying to shut down your websites they weren't trying to go after your financial institutions they weren't having to to swat you and all these other things that are going on right now is absolutely absurd the level of attention that uh all of this is getting and some people make the argument that this is to um, ensure that these particular voices aren't going to be providing too much support for President Trump or that these individuals will be involved in trying to misrepresent what the media is trying to say so these are all steps and contingencies to help protect would what would be the 2020 election which is kind of funny because we just saw the whole big 
complete um, sham, as it were, about the collusion investigation, which there was no collusion. Not only was there no collusion from President Trump, there was no individual whatsoever that was involved in collusion. And then, of course, the um, Judicial Committee had to bring um, and uh, had to bring uh, Barr up to the uh, to the dog and pony show. He didn't even have to go there; they just wanted to bring him out, very much like uh, Brett Kavanaugh. Brett Kavanaugh went through the same thing. It's all theater, all theater so these individuals can pander to their base and say look at what we did we did a dog kicking session of these individuals that you don't like because you don't like president trump all right guys if you have any questions comments anything else feel free to leave them down in the public section below and of course if you uh want to continue to get say like the friday vlog and additional material i here have here on the channel be sure to click on that uh, channel icon appearing right there on the screen to subscribe. Of course, your support is greatly appreciated. Feel free to share this with uh, whomever you like on your social media. And I will see you guys in the next video.